Today's video is all about mutations. So we'll cover what causes mutations and what some of their consequences can be. Now, all we mean by mutation is a change in the DNA base sequence. So a change in the sequence of letters that make up our DNA code. Like in this example here, where this C has been changed to a G. These mutations happen spontaneously in our cells all the time, particularly when DNA is being duplicated before cell division, like in mitosis. Two things that increase the risk of mutations, though, are carcinogens, which are a group of harmful chemicals, like you get in cigarette smoke, and certain types of radiation, like X-rays or gamma rays. It's important to understand, though, that these things don't always cause mutations. They just increase the risk of a mutation occurring. To understand how mutations affect our body, we need to quickly recap how DNA works. If we think of a gene, which is just a section of DNA that codes for a protein, then all it really is is a particular sequence of bases. Each group of three bases is called a triplet, or a codon, and codes for one of the 20 different amino acids. So this codon here, ACC, might code for amino acid 7, while this other one, CTA, could code for amino acid 18. By doing this for all of the triplets, and then combining the amino acids together in the correct order, we create a long chain of amino acids, which can then fold up by itself to form a protein. However, if this piece of DNA had a mutation, for example, this G here changed to a T, then the amino acid that this codon codes for might change as well. And this small change can have lots of knock-on effects. This is because the overall sequence of amino acids would now be different. And so the protein that it ends up forming would be different as well, meaning that it can have a different shape or function. For example, if this protein was an enzyme, then the mutation might change the shape of the enzyme's active site so that it can't fit the substrate anymore. This would mean that it can't form an enzyme substrate complex and so it couldn't catalyze the reaction. Most of the time, though, a mutation doesn't have any significant effect. This is because they'll often only affect a protein very slightly, so it might look a tiny bit different, but it still works in basically the same way. Also, most mutations occur in what we call non-coding DNA, which isn't part of any gene and so doesn't code for a protein. Most of this non-coding DNA doesn't seem to do anything at all, and we're not really sure why we have so much of it. But some of it does play an important role in the expression of genes, which is whether those genes are turned on or off. For example, if we think of a nerve cell, there's no need for it to produce hemoglobin because hemoglobin's only needed by red blood cells. So in the nerve cell, the gene for hemoglobin will be switched off, which is the same thing as saying that it won't be expressed. The last thing we need to cover are the three specific types of mutations, substitutions, insertions, and deletions. If we take this DNA sequence as an example, Let's start with a substitution mutation, which is when one of the bases is changed or substituted for another random base. Like if this A changed to a T, or this G changed to an A. As we saw earlier, the problem with this is that it changes the codon that that base is in, and so could change the amino acid that it codes for. Now, an insertion mutation is a bit different. This time, an extra base is inserted into the sequence somewhere. For example, if a C was inserted in here, between the T and the A of CTA, 
then this codon would change from CTA to CTC because the A has been pushed along to the next codon. This feature means that these mutations are actually a lot worse than substitution mutations are because it means that all the subsequent bases are shifted along by one, which alters all of the subsequent codons. And so the amino acid chain after that point would be completely different. A similar thing happens with deletion mutations, which is where one of the bases is deleted from the sequence. For example, if this T gets deleted, then our DNA will look like this. Because the T has been removed, this A has now shifted one space to the left. And as a result, all of these spaces will also have shifted one space to the left. So as well as this codon being different, all of these subsequent ones will be as well. Anyway, that's everything for today's video. So if you found it useful, then please do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.